uh, Canada and Scotland have something in common. We may be uh, having an internal referendum in one of our regions, in, or though in the UK it's a constituent nation, I suppose, uh, concerning separation. The French-speaking province of Quebec looks as though uh, it's going to have a separatist government um, in the next election that's coming up soon, which could lead to another referendum on separation, on secession from Canada. Um, we've had two of these so far, and they're pretty harrowing experiences. But one of the ironic things is these sorts of nasty periods of national difficulty or existential difficulty, if I dare use that word, at have the weird unintended consequence often of strengthening the overall system. For example, um, Canada, English-speaking Canadians outside of the province of Quebec are, as a result, I think, of the last referendum in 1995, have finally gotten it through their heads, <laughs> took a while, that Quebec is a different sort of province from all the others. Maybe it's unlikely that the other provinces will agree to give it special privileges that are not accorded to them, but at least the psychological or emotional barrier was broken whereby people just got into the habit of thinking that Quebec would always be part of Canada and we can just disregard the legitimate differences that that the Quebecois or French Canadians in general um, feel towards the federal government, the, the different opinions that they may express towards Canadianness. It's a contentious issue in Canada. Is Canada two nations or many nations or one nation or what? Um, a lot of people say that it's many nations. The Quebecois generally, I think, would say that that might be true, but, you know, from the perspective of their interests, it, Canada is two nations. Now, if you've ever lived among the Quebecois, it's hard to say that they are the same people as English Canadians, because, well, they're not. They share many values, and in many ways, almost in spite of themselves, they have a profound emotional attachment to Canada and to their English-speaking fellow country people. They do. Uh, they the kind of rage that you see, um, ethnic rage that you see in a lot of other countries, I cannot imagine happening in Canada. I can see English and French Canadians screaming at each other uh, maybe after the bars close in the streets. I can see um, English and French Canadians duking it out in the newspapers and the op-ed columns and stuff like that. I cannot see, no matter how pessimistic I get, um, I can't see English and French Canadians reaching for weapons to fight each other. It it just it, it the dynamic does not seem to allow for that. Even if tensions raise to the point where it looks as though the country might break up, uh, I can see it might might not be painless. In fact, it would probably be quite a painful process. But I can't see a civil war or anything even remotely resembling that uh, taking place. Because however much we fight, the English and the French Canadians generally like each other. Um, and when you have a situation whereby English Canada seems to be honestly attempting to come to terms with the, I won't even say demands, but concerns of the Quebecois, um, it kind of in a strange way undercuts the arguments of the separatists. The separatists say uh, the Canadian Federation doesn't work anymore. Therefore, we have to secede, regardless of whether or not we have anything against les Anglais. Now, make no mistake, there are bigots on both sides. There are bigoted English Canadians who just don't like French Canadians and Québécois or whatever. There are bigoted Québécois and French Canadians who don't like the English. There's no point in sugarcoating that. But um, there is a critical mass on both sides, and I would, in my honest opinion, and I'm not trying to be over-optimistic here, in my honest opinion, I would say the overwhelming majority of people on both sides want to come to terms with each other. They, they truly do want to work this out. But it, a lot of Quebecois are pushed towards separatism by a sense of frustration with Canadian federalism or with the more crazy 
um, English nationalists. I don't know what you'd, what you'd how you'd characterize these people um, who think that uh, even the idea of Quebec separatism is treason or whatever. Um, that th those people are kind of viewed as dangerous by most English Canadians, fanatical Federalists, but there's not that many of them. They can make a lot of noise and, and, and as individuals cause trouble, but I can't really see it ever becoming something like the dynamic of, say, the hardline Ulster Unionists um, in Northern Ireland, who, uh, ironically, even themselves are... You, you, they've shown that you can actually negotiate with them, provided you do so on the basis of interests. Now, um, Scotland strikes me as an interesting sort of possible parallel, because however you want to characterize the Scottish nationalists, they're not nationalists in the usual sense of the word. I'm sure there's plenty of people that like to run around with blue paint on their face wearing kilts and folk the English and all this kind of thing. Uh, although that, I, I said it the Irish way, but um, you know, I'm sure I'm sure there's a bit of that going around. But I'm I get the impression that Scottish nationalism is basically, and it's hard to <laughs> it's weird to say this nationalism as per progressive, but there is a powerful and probably dominant progressive impetus behind um, that movement, the separatist movement in Scotland, and. Although there are sort of right-wing ethnic nationalists in Quebec, and Pauline Marois, the current premier of Quebec, is generally viewed as one of them, actually, kind of a nasty ethnic nationalist type of person. Um, like Quebecois nationalism, Scottish nationalism doesn't give off that vibe of, you know, traditional value-type redneckish sort of tub-thumping patriotic flag-waving nationalism, which in the UK, in my honest opinion, is seems to be more characteristic of the English than the Scottish. Um, the English do seem to be more likely to beat their chests and wave the Union Jack than the Scots are to beat their chests and wave the Cross of St. Andrew. Um, but the interesting thing is, and, and I, I think that if you... British people and Scottish people in general have caught on to this, nationalism, or at least separatism, can be a useful tool. Now, if you're sort of a soft separatist, in other words, you could live with existing in the UK as a Scot, it's not the end of the world, and you kind of like the fact that you've got a king and a queen, and you kind of like the fact that you've got a shared history of, you know, the, the, the Battle of Britain, and... Uh, the British Empire and all this sort of thing with the English. There's, uh, you know, however much they might duke it out, I think there is a profound sort of mutual respect there between the Scots and the rest of the British. Um, the very threat of separatism forces the, um, uh, you know, you're, you're inclined to say the English, but that's not really true. It forces the federal minded people to get off their butt and justify the Federation. And in that sense, I support uh, Quebec uh, separatism in that sense, because I think that, you know, if, if something can't justify itself, um, then it's started to ossify. If it's not constantly being challenged, then it's not going to develop into anything new. It's just going to stay where it is, and even, especially if a country has gotten into some sort of a rut. Now, you know, with Tony Blair's idea of Britain as a broken society, etc. Uh, the Scots, ironically, um, the Scottish separatists, are capable of breathing fresh air into the body politic of the United Kingdom by simply saying, look, we've got a problem here. <laughs> we've got to justify our own existence. Um, we have to, we have to, you know, the UK has to sell itself to us Scots if we're going to stick around here. And Canadian federalism, the Canadian system, which kind of more resembles the Confederate States of America than, say, the, the U.S. type of federalism, where the federal government has most of the power in Canada, it's more evenly distributed between the provinces and the feds, with kind of the provinces kind of having more power, but only in certain areas than the federal government does over people's day-to-day -day lives. 
it's more of, truly of a federation of different regions and uh, if you could sort of turn if the UK could morph into something like that um, right now it's kind of still a unitary state if you could sort of if the UK could morph into something like that it may end up resulting in a far more dynamic society simply because it has to now uh, it has to justify itself at every turn every time the federal government say in Canada now does something they have to look and see okay how is this going to go down in both of the two linguistic um, components of Canada how are the French going to take this how are the English going to take this keeps the politicians on their toes the downside of this is of course it you end up being an extremely navel gazing country which Canada definitely is uh, it, you become very self self absorbed because it takes up an awful lot of your own mental energy to govern yourself in such a way as to not rub anybody the wrong way um, so uh, the upshot of the rise of Scottish separatism could be ironically a strengthening of the United Kingdom even though maybe on paper it might look like it's getting weaker the the non unitary I don't know what you'd call these people people that believe that maybe say Wales or Northern Ireland or um, Scotland or various regions of England even should have more local autonomy um, those forces in, in British politics which don't really seem to have much of a voice right now would get a stronger voice and you would have more of an even balance I would say between federal politics and local politics or not so much local politics because local politics in the UK is alive and kicking uh, really people get passionate about it but I guess I would say regional politics um, if you had Scotland you know uh, with the possibility of uh, Scotland or Wales or I don't know even say East Anglia or some part of Northern England um, separating it would have the effect of forcing the federal government to take note of each separate regions concerns that is a pain in the ass <laughs> it is there's no other way to characterize it but it has the effect actually of meeting the concerns of each region in as much as such concerns are meetable <laughs> um, and it makes the country a lot more difficult to govern but too bad for the government uh, that's my opinion you uh, why should we make it easier for you to rule over us <laughs> um, the, you know the, too bad if we're impossible to govern deal with it <laughs> um, so yeah I it, in a sense uh, although I would uh, to be perfectly honest I would like to see the I would like to see Scotland remain part of the UK in a sense though I sort of I don't know I think that Scottish separatism maybe not Scottish nationalism but Scottish separatism may end up being a good thing even for the United Kingdom in the same ironic way that Quebec separatism so far has been a good thing if you ask me for Canadian federalism um, I don't really have strong political opinions on many things but it does look to me as though um, a federal system when you have different senses of national identity within the same country is the most rational way to run the show and any attempts to suppress that kind of thing or check it or defeat it uh, have the opposite effect once the Scots have gotten it into their head that they're going to seriously consider challenging their position in the UK the genie is out of the bottle you've got to deal with that reality and you know the once once the, the cork is out of the bottle and the genie has escaped well you can now negotiate you have to change your point of view but you um, you have to assume that or you have to stop assuming I guess that Scotland's always going to be their part of the UK you have to always look over your shoulder what do the Scots think or perhaps in the future what do the Welsh think uh, what do the Cornish think <laughs> you know who knows um, I don't see that as a bad thing 
and I don't see it as necessarily a menace to the further unity of the country. If anything, it's a, it could be a safety valve um, to allow people to express their frustration with the way the political system now functions in a way that is guaranteed to get the attention of the people at the center. That's got to be a good thing. This is um, sort of a very belated response to Grey Tex's video on Scottish uh, separatism. Long-winded and out of character from most of my videos, but it's a subject that you, you just get used to dealing with and living with here in Canada. And you can deal with it, and you can live with it. Um, I think that the UK might find at the beginning that it's an extremely disorienting experience to have to deal with uh, regional separatism of this strength and stature, but it's not the end of the world, and it's one of those things that with competition, with you know, uh, competing sets of ideas, the end result might be <clears throat> a stronger, stronger and more viable UK. I think, in all honesty, that Quebec separatism has had that result on Canadian federalism. Um, and who knows, uh, this might anger a few Scottish nationalists, but their movement may result in making the UK a more durable polity. Who knows?